I'm a solutions engineering manager here at Confluent, and I help people just like you migrate from open source Kafka to Confluent Cloud every day. After working with hundreds of enterprise customers, I've noticed the most challenging part of a migration is simply getting started. But don't worry, you're in luck. In this short video, I'll be running through the high level steps on how to get started with your migration. And even better, once you're done watching, you can download our comprehensive migration kit for a step-by-step -step guide of everything I've talked about and more. So you ready to get started? A migration from Apache Kafka to Confluent Cloud can be broken down into a few simple phases. As with any migration, preparation is vital. It is crucial to establish a clear understanding of the migration's scope and objectives, enabling your team to stay on schedule and avoid any unwanted surprises. In many organizations, various stakeholders, such as those in security, networking, and data platforms are typically involved. Therefore, it's advised to define key milestones and what success looks like for each of those stakeholders. By defining the migration scope and objectives, you can ensure alignment between cross-functional teams and lay a strong foundation for the migration process. Once you've completed the planning phase, it's time to set up, migrate, and validate. These phases should be completed first with lower environments and then repeated up to production. Production should always be the last environment to migrate after thorough testing and benchmarking of lower level stages. The first of these iterative phases is the setup phase. The setup phase is where you will provision and configure your Confluent Cloud clusters. It is strongly recommended to conduct performance benchmarks and testing to ensure your Confluent configuration will meet your business requirements. With benchmarking and testing completed, you're ready to migrate. If your migration requires historical data from the original cluster, replicate the data to create that history in Confluent. Once that data's replication lag is near zero, follow one of the client migration patterns from the migration kit to move your clients to produce and consume from the Confluent cluster. Finally, after moving the clients, validate your workloads are functioning as expected and that the performance benchmarks are met. Let's dive a little bit deeper into each of these phases. As previously mentioned, thoughtful planning is key to the success of any migration. We've created a convenient pre-migration checklist to help our customers smoothly and easily migrate to Confluent Cloud. The pre-migration checklist breaks down into three components, requirements gathering, choosing your Confluent configuration, and reviewing the plan with all stakeholders. Let's begin with requirements gathering. To start, you'll want to define your migration timeline. The speed at which you move to Confluent Cloud is entirely your decision, as many factors such as business requirements, technical roadmap, and client team priorities can impact the timeline. Consider these factors to determine the intended date to complete the migration. Most commonly, migrations involve migrating an entire cluster and all associated workloads at once or over a short window. It's also important to keep in mind that each item in the pre-migration checklist can impact the timeline. So be prepared to adjust the timeline as decisions or requirements are defined for each of the following sections. After you define your timeline, you need to capture the scope for the migration. To define the migration scope, begin by understanding the existing Kafka deployment. Your assessment should include a review of the cluster configurations, the topic topology and data model, as well as the Kafka client configurations and performance. As a part of the assessment, it is prudent to identify a list of benchmarks you can use to validate the workloads once they're migrated to Confluent Cloud. Next, you'll need to decide whether or not you even need to migrate data in your existing Kafka cluster to Confluent Cloud. This decision does not need to be unilateral. Some of your topics may require other data to be migrated and others may not. Either way, it's important to capture this requirement in your plan. A migration is also a great time to tackle some of the technical debt that may have built up in your existing deployment. You should consider if optimizing and improving the client's workload, data model, data quality, or cluster topology should be included in the migration. Once you've defined your scope, you should next consider the amount of client downtime that is acceptable during the migration. For any Kafka migration, clients must be restarted to use the bootstrap URL and security configurations of the destination cluster. Therefore, you must either plan for the downtime incurred when the clients restart or run a blue-green deployment to achieve zero downtime. Depending on the client architecture and migration strategy, downtime can be very brief, but it is almost always greater than zero when the same set of clients are repointed to the Confluent cluster. 
Therefore, it is recommended to execute the migration for production workloads during a maintenance window or a period of low traffic. Next, define your data processing requirements. Data processing requirements for each client must be well-defined as it is critical to know if clients can effectively process duplicate messages or tolerate missed messages. By capturing the data processing requirements, you will be able to select the appropriate data replication tool and client migration pattern. After defining your data processing requirements, you'll need to review potential security changes that may occur when switching to Confluent Cloud. Often in Apache Kafka deployments, Kafka security settings are absent as administrators very commonly depend on their firewall or VPC security groups. However, when it comes to a cloud environment, implementing additional security controls is necessary to keep the workloads safe. Confluent Cloud offers a variety of tools to keep your data safe and secure, such as encryption of data at rest and in motion, bring your own encryption key capabilities, and multiple cloud native authentication mechanisms to choose from. The final requirement you'll want to gather is the network connectivity you'd like to use to connect to the Confluent Cloud clusters. Confluent Cloud can support public and private internet connectivity on all cloud service providers. Be sure to consult your networking team to affirm that the selected networking type aligns with your organization's networking and security policies. With all your requirements decided and documented, you are ready to move on to the next step of the checklist, choosing your Confluent configuration. To begin, you'll want to select the best Confluent Cloud cluster type for your workloads. When selecting a cluster in Confluent Cloud, there are several different cluster types to choose between. Be sure to consult your existing Kafka cluster assessment and networking connectivity to ensure the cluster type is best suited for your workload. Your Confluent account team is always available to help you choose the cluster type that best fits your workload. Today, we have five cluster types available, basic, standard, enterprise, freight, and dedicated. If you need to migrate historical data to Confluent Cloud, you'll next want to select the optimal data replication tool. Today, there are three primary tools available to migrate data from Apache Kafka to Confluent Cloud. Confluent Cluster Linking, Confluent Replicator, and Mirror Maker 2. While it is most common for a single replication tool to be used during the migration, it is possible to use multiple replication tools if you desire. If you're migrating data to Confluent and use schemas, you will also want to select the optimal schema replication tool. To guarantee data quality, it is recommended to use Confluent's fully managed schema registry to support the management and evolution of message schemas. Now that you've chosen your Confluent configuration, you can perform the final step of reviewing your migration plan with key stakeholders. All right, so now that we've discussed how you can plan for your migration, let's now cover how you should set up your environment. Your first step is going to be to create your Confluent Cloud clusters. Select the cluster type, networking, and region determined in the planning phase. Next, validate the networking connectivity between the clients and Confluent Cloud resources. If you are replicating historical data, also check the connectivity between the source and destination clusters. After validating the connectivity, if you are replicating historical data, set up the replication tool you chose during the planning phase. Once the cluster is set up, perform benchmarking tests to validate your use case on the cluster. This will help you confirm Confluent Cloud and your clients are correctly configured for your use case. Finally, prepare the automation for updating the Bootstrap server and security configurations for the clients. The specifics of how this is done will vary depending on how your clients are deployed and the security configurations you've chosen. For information on how to update these, check out the white paper for detailed instructions. Now that we've discussed how you can both plan for and set up your environment for the migration, let's talk about how to actually migrate and what you'll need to do. It is most common in migrations to migrate the entire cluster and all associated workloads at once. However, a phased approach can also be taken if necessary. We recommend migrating everything at once since it avoids the need to untangle complex client interdependencies, delivers the highest ROI on Confluent Cloud, and reduces the overall migration time. How your clients migrate to Confluent Cloud will vary based on your timeline, data processing, downtime, and data replication requirements. There are three patterns available for both when data replication is needed and not needed. Keep in mind that regardless of whether you're replicating data, it's important to be mindful of any client interdependencies that may require some clients to be restarted before others. 
The three common patterns you can use when not replicating historical data are restart all at once, stop, wait, restart, or blue-green deployment. If you require historical data to be replicated to Confluent, you also have three options for how you can migrate the clients. Stop, wait, restart, stop, restart, repeat, or a blue-green deployment. The pattern you decide depends on the threshold for your consumers to miss messages, client interdependencies, and your downtime requirements. Additionally, the steps for each pattern will differ based on the replication tool you're using. In our white paper, you can read up on all the specific situations and examples on how these client patterns can be executed. After migrating to Confluent Cloud, we recommend doing a final validation to ensure that the migration state meets the requirements and goals defined during your planning phase. Once that's set, congratulations. You've officially migrated and are ready to get started on Confluent Cloud. I hope this was a helpful introduction to how you can migrate to Confluent Cloud. Take a look at our full migration kit for a deep dive into the details of a successful migration to Confluent Cloud. And if you're interested, get started for free with a Confluent Cloud trial. All new signups get $400 to spend in your first 30 days. Thanks again for watching, and I hope your migration to Confluent goes smoothly.